Well, it's Friday again, and we've lost again. Kentucky falls, unfortunately, in a game that uh, never really felt close there down the stretch to Texas A&M once again. Uh, Jack Pilgrim here with Tyler Thompson, Zach Gagan, and voiceless Drew Franklin. Drew, how, how you doing? You, there were a lot of uh, rocky tops that unfortunately did not go well for you. Uh, I did too much singing today. I'm going to try to participate, but I don't have much of a voice, so I'll keep it short and sweet. But God, that sucked. I mean, that just sucks so bad. I want to take this bracket and throw it in the river right now. Let's do it. They haven't, they haven't put Kentucky up there yet, or Texas A&M up there yet. So if you want, if you want to put Kentucky <laughs> there and make it feel good, we will control our destiny. <laughs> it won't work, Damn. but you get the idea. Yeah, it was a, a really, really tough. It's unfortunate because the fans were there. It was an atmosphere that you will remember for a really long time, but it's unfortunate that they did not get the uh, the reward for their efforts, Tyler. 100%, you know, Steven and I walked up and down Broadway about an hour and a half before tip off, and it was just electric. Like the energy was just amazing. Kentucky fans were everywhere doing catch chants, you know, out in the street. The line to get in this place was incredible. It was just like a sea of blue. And then once everybody got in, it, you know, I haven't been to a ton of games at Rupp lately, but that at atmosphere felt insane. Like the SEC tournament fans are the best fans and tonight they showed it. And unfortunately they just didn't have a lot to cheer for. Well, Zach, uh, in terms of how it actually unfolded, Way Taylor, obviously the, the the star of the show, mm -hmm. shushing the fan base that we are just so uh, so passionately proud of. He did his part to shut them up. I just went nuclear once again. A guy that shoots 31% on the year from three hits a ton of them, and it's just kind of the story of the of the uh, of the day where just defense was non-existent for the Cats. Yeah, Wade Taylor. Something about playing Kentucky, he just loves them, and it's not just Wade Taylor. It's Tyrese Radford too. My favorite stat now that I have is 114 points from Wade Taylor and Tyrese Radford in two games against Kentucky. That's almost 60% of their scoring in two games from two guys that they, UK could just not slow down. And I don't, I, I don't know their shooting percentages, but I believe combined is probably under 50%. I don't know how, they, they just hit big threes. Wade Taylor got rolling early on. I think he hit what, the first three maybe? I think A&M started four for four. They made 14 threes or 11 threes, doesn't really matter at this point. They made more than their season average. They are the second to worst three point shooting team in the country. They hit 40% today, 42%, I think. So something about tennis, I mean, it, it happens, I guess you can say, is like maybe it just happens. If one team just has your number all season, uh, but you don't want to run into that team when you're playing in the SC tournament and just trying to get yourself rolling a little bit going into the big dance. But luckily, this tournament doesn't actually matter. So we can take that into account, I guess. Oh, yeah, that part's a tough, that, that makes it a really tough pill to swallow, Drew, because the fans are clearly invested in this, but when your head coach enters this week saying, this event doesn't matter, all that matters is for seeding, uh, we only care about the big one, and then they come out and lay an egg the way they did, it, it's, it's really, really tough, because now I think all the pressure is on his own players for next week, which I think is probably, Backtracking yeah, is not helping. I feel so bad for these fans. We met so many awesome people at Tin Roof at our show. So many cool stories of why they're here, who they're here with, where they came from, how excited they are. All day today, meet people on Broadway. It just felt different. Everyone felt like Kentucky's back. Kentucky's not back. Not in this tournament. I mean, back to back Fridays. That, that this is the Kentucky Invitational. It is insanity that we haven't even played on Sunday since 2018, but here we go again. Buzz Williams, unbelievably calm, cool. I don't even think he broke a sweat, and he's a guy who's known, for being, known for being sweaty. Uh, they were just locked in, loaded. They had the will to win, all of the, the stuff that we talk about, what it takes to win these types of games, and it felt like Kentucky was tight the entire time. So they may say that this event doesn't matter or whatever, but they played tight, nervous, uh, and if this event that does not matter apparently, if they're this nervous and tight for this one, doesn't necessarily bode well for next week. In yeah, I, I think it, it really worries me because it felt like this team was playing so well coming in. You know, they had won five straight, they had just beaten Tennessee at Tennessee, 
And then they came out tonight and just looked kind of honestly like the past few Kentucky teams who've lost early in the SEC and NCAA tournaments have looked. They were tight. They just looked totally out of sync offensively. Like, what happened to the team that was just burning teams and averaging like 103 points over the last four or five games? They were gone. And I think that it just, tonight's performance, another early exit from the SEC tournament, just really raises the stakes for next week and the pressure that's going to be on these kids in the first round game and if they're you know if they make it to the second round game to get out of that first weekend it's just it's going to be a whole lot Zach, you were there in the uh, locker room with me afterward mm -hmm. the vibes were were solid like not bad death despair sadness like it, it, you you could tell they were frust frustrated but it you know there was kind of an edge to them and kind of a you know what we were, you know, we typically refocus in these types of moments. We've responded to adversity well this season. Is that kind of the vibe that you got from from meeting with the players afterward? Yeah, no, I definitely think it was. I mean, Trey Mitchell was very adamant. He said it in the on the podium and then in the, again in the locker room that you know, they're not done. This is they're still they're wait they're excited. I Reed Shepard used the word excited for the NCAA tournament. They're already looking forward to what's next. Uh, Rob was kind of the same way. Uh, you know, they were disappointed and they were sulking a little bit and kind of wallowing in the in the loss, but. Not to the point where you they just felt dejected and like every, the season was over with. Uh, so I guess if you want to take a bright side, you know, having a bunch of freshmen, that's probably the good thing is they'll they'll quickly turn things over and you've got a couple of veterans who've been on tournament runs before. You can have them. Well, I guess Reeves hasn't. Trey Mitchell has before, so he can guide them a little bit, maybe help them just keep their keep their uh, the hopes up, and we'll see. But yes, the vibes are still good, I think, in the locker room at least. So. The fan base, mm, we'll see. <laughs> and, and I think that's my now frustration is all yeah. of this is now down to a Final Four bus mentality. I think they could have bought themselves around potentially in terms of leniency with, with Cal and the state of the program had they won this thing because they just haven't seen the confetti fall. They haven't seen the trophy. They haven't had that, you know, top level moment so had they been able to do that I think they would have had some level of flexibility but now it has become a final four or bust and that's a really scary predicament to be in and it doesn't have to be this way but they made it that way I, there's so much pressure you could see it John Calipari was yelling at anyone near him in that first half where Buzz Williams is clapping relaxed AM's players are pumping up the crowd Kentucky looks so tight they cannot do that again next week or it's gonna be the same result Forget substitutions, rotations, who should play. If they have that same attitude that it looked like they had, I'm not in their heads. But A&M looks so much more loose and so much more confident in a building where there was maybe six A&M fans. Why were they were the ones that were loose and confident? And that's a big issue. I think six is a generous number for Texas A&M fans. That was 99.9% .9 Kentucky in there. It was a home game. It was a home game. It's just, it's unbelievable. Um, there were a lot of bad stats afterward. Do, do we have any favorites of, you know, one for five in the last six? I, I see any that you particularly like? I, I was very focused on my Wade Taylor, Tyrese Radford stat to dive into anything else disgusting. Hmm. Bad vibes. Very, very bad vibes. Any closing? I have a, I have a good stat. Yep. This place is going to be very empty. <laughs> yeah. Very empty yeah. uh, moving forward. It, it was like a, a get in price of like 230 bucks entering the game for the rest of the weekend. Now it's like 20 bucks. There's a guy over there that's holding a finger up for one ticket. He could just walk in right now. I think I don't know. The, the, only, the only people sadder than Kentucky fans are the Nashville bar and restaurant owners because yeah. Tennessee's out, Kentucky's out. I mean, there are kind of some fans for other teams, but not really. So hopefully, you know, everybody go out, drown your sorrows, be safe, and then Nashville will make the money back somehow, I have a feeling. <sighs> well, that wraps us up again. A one and done uh, opportunity Mom -mom. for us here uh, in the SEC tournament. It's frustrating, but it's all, you know, this team's built for March. Apparently, maybe it's like, the, like Drew said, the back half of March. So he didn't say which March they're built for. He didn't say which March. Great point. So I guess we're going to go home now, and I guess we'll see you next week.